Dear student, in this class we continue the problems on exercise 5.2. Now taking the third question, consider two postulates given below. First one, given any two distinct points A and B, there exists a third point C which is in between A and B. Second one, there exist at least three points that are not on the same line. Now, continue the question. Do the postulate contain any undefined terms? Next, are the postulate consistent? Third one, do they follow from Euclid postulate? Explain. Did you understand the question? See here, given two statements. First one, there are two points A and B, and the third point C lies between A and B. What about the second statement? There are the two points A and B, yet there exists another point C that is not lying on the same straight line. Arthakta the very statement, first in a statement, C lies on the straight line AB and between AB. The second statement, the point C do not lie on the same straight line. Andre. AB straight line may be the same as the straight line may be the same as the straight line. Do the postulate contain any undefined terms? Yes, the statement contains undefined terms. Which are those? Here, the points and lines. These are the undefined terms. If you put it in the end of the postulate, the points and the terms are used. If you put it in the lines and the terms are used. That is the points and lines are the undefined terms of this postulate. Second way, are the postulate consistent? Yes, the postulate consistent because there are deals with the two different situations. First situation, there are given two points A and B, there exist the points to C lies between A and B. In the second statement, there are given two points A and B, there exist the third point C which do not lie on the same straight line. That is the very, very situation in the country. The given postulate are consistent. Now, see the third question. Do they follow from Euclid postulate? Explain. Do they follow? No. They do not follow Euclid postulate, but they follow Euclid axioms. What is the axioms? Given two distinct points, there is a unique line that passes through them. And the Kotirtha Kanta Yeradush point could not be one day when the line and the name of the drama. Now, taking the fourth question if a point C lies between two points A and B such that AC is equal to BC, then prove that AC is equal to half of AB. Explain by drawing the figure. Okay. First taking figure. See here. First taking your scale and pencil. Draw. Yes. Try line EB. Give the name A. Another end. Give the name B. The point C lies between A and B. B. See here, AB is the given line segment. The point C lies between A and B. Okay. Now given, take the solution. See here, in the given question, AC equal to BC. What we need to prove? AC equal to half of AB. Now, Solution AC equal to BC that is given. Okay. Now see here 
AC plus BC can be written as AB. That's why adding AC to both the sides. Now, take it here. Adding AC to both sides. That implies, see here, already AC there. When we add in AC, we get AC plus AC into already BC there. Now, adding AC to RHS also, we get AC plus BC. See here, equals are added to equal, then the holes are equal. That's why, see here, AC plus AC into Twice of AC or 2 AC equal to AC plus BC. AC plus BC can be written as AB. Okay. So, 2 AC equal to AB. Therefore, 2 A transpose to RHS, we get AC equal to half of AB. Okay, we require AC equal to half of AB. Now taking the question number 5. In question 4, point C is called a midpoint of the segment AB. Prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint. Question number 5. Fourth question number 8. C is the midpoint of AB. If AC equal to half of AB, then C is the midpoint of AB. Now, we need to prove every line segment having one and only one midpoint. So, taking the same figure and taking solution. See here, we know that in the given line segment AB, C is the midpoint of AB. So, C is the midpoint of AB. That implies AC will do half of AB. Consider equation. One let D be the midpoint of AB today. Figure this C the midpoint of AB go that the D midpoint Allah put an away more back on. Let us assume that D is the midpoint of AB. So take it here. Let D be the Midpoint of EB that implies C here. C is the midpoint of AB, then A is equal to half of AB. Similarly, D is the midpoint of AB, then AD equal to half of EB. Equation 2. Okay, see here now subtract equation 1 from 2. See here, subtract equation 1 from 2. Equation 1 and 2 in the subtract. No, take it. Here I go. LHS of equation 1 subtracted from LHS of equation 2 as well as the RHS of equation 1 subtracted from RHS of equation 2. See here, from the equation 2, AD there. So, AD subtract means minus AC equal to half of EB minus Half of EB. Okay. Now, 
AD minus AC. AD minus AC can be written as CD. Alba, ega, AD minus AC equal to CD. That is equal to half of AB minus half of AB. That becomes G. That means see here. AD minus AC means CD. The distance between CD becomes 0. Whenever it is possible. If C and D coincide, then the distance between C D becomes 0. Well, that's why C D equal to 0. Therefore, C and D go inside. If C and D coincide, then we say every line segment having one and only one. Point. In C a C equal to B D, then do that A B equal to C D. Okay. See here. First taking solution. What about you want? A C equal to B D. A C equal to B D. Point that you want. But remember here. A C can be written as A D plus B C. Similarly, B D can be written as B C plus C D. So, A C can be written as A D plus B C equal to B D can be written as B C plus C D. Now, subtract BC from both sides. See here, in either side, BC is common. So, subtract BC from both sides. Subtract up. Subtracting BC from both sides. That implies, see here, AB plus BC subtracting BC means minus BC equal to BC plus CD minus BC. Remember here, equals are subtracted from equal, the remainders are equal by the Euclid axiom we already learnt about equals are subtracted from equal, the remainders are equal. So, see here, BC minus BC becomes 0. Here, in the left side, AB is remaining equal to BC minus BC becomes 0. So, remaining CD. See here, AB equal to CD. Here's proof. When y is axiom 5 in the list of euclid axioms consider a universal truth see here we know that axiom 5 states that only greater than the part axiom 5 is that only greater than the part why it is list of euclid axiom consider a universal truth the only greater than the part when we take the apple when it is cut into four pieces then each part of the apple is less than that of the apple okay so this statement is true in all the situations so see here when we take the fruit cut into four part or more than four part each part is less than the whole when we take the number, see, 
taking the number 5, 5 can be written as 3 plus 2. Alva, 3 plus 2 equal to 5. Ega, 5 is greater than 3 as well as 5 is greater than 2 also. So, 4 is greater than the part. Alva, ega, other the geometry configurable. Now, ega, when the 5 centimeter is the line segment, anna, 2 part is divided. When the 3 centimeter is the 2 centimeter. Alva, now, the 5 centimeter line segment is greater than 3 centimeter line segment as well as 2 centimeter line segment also. That's why the whole is greater than the part. So, as we have 5 is 2 in all the situation, hence it is considered a universal 